and here we go. This is 7-11, the last section of notes. This is meiosis, which is a continuation of yesterday's mitosis. The only problem is you can't see it till it's all done. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, meiosis, which is chapter 11, section 4. I know it's kind of out of place, but that's okay. Um, deals with how do we take regular cells and turn them into eggs and sperm. So to do that, we need our chromosomes that we saw yesterday with mitosis. Now remember, we have two of everything, right? We get one from mom and one from dad. So we have 23 of these pairs of chromosomes. And... And so, what's going on is since one chromosome came from mom and one came from dad, well, then we, these pairs that are identical to each other we call homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes are two chromosomes that are identical in size, shape, and the genes they carry. You get one from mom, one from dad. So, the uh, homologous, just like if two big Bs is hom um, homozygous, well, these are homologous. So that's kind of, so just use that root word as meaning the same. So homologous chromosomes, so you get two, uh, one from mom, one from dad. And all it is is we get the one strand from dad here, one strand from mom. And then when they duplicate during the S phase, well, then you just have, you know, two of each. So two chromosomes, homologous chromosomes, they're identical, and they get paired up during <laughs> they get paired up during, um, see, now I can't think because my daughter's over there trying to make me laugh. So they pair up with each other um, during uh, cell reproduction. Okay, so if I have all 46 chromosomes in my cells, um, that cell is referred to being as diploid. So diploid, die, meaning two. So I have two sets, one set, two sets. So if I have two of everything, that means I, my cell is diploid, and it contains both sets of homologous chromosomes, or technically I have all 46, or another way of looking that, at that is 23 pairs. And so where do I find these cells that are diploid? I find them in all my body cells, pretty much everything except for eggs and sperm. But the cells that we make that are going to go on to produce offspring, eggs and sperm, well, these guys, they can't have 46 because if they get together, then that is going to make a cell with 92. Well, that's not a human, so we can't have that. So what we have to do is we have to have cells that are what are called haploid. Haploid sounds like the word haploid. And so half, half of 46 is 23. So haploid cells are the eggs and the sperm only. That's the only ones you're allowed. And what happens is they turn into 23 chromosomes, so that way when they do fertilize each other, we get back up to 46, and that is a human. Yay! So a cell that contains one set of chromosomes or has 23, or uh, basically another way of putting that is no pairs, and then we would call that a haploid cell. So your eggs and sperm are your only haploid cells in your body. So how do I turn a cell with 46 chromosomes into a cell with 23 chromosomes? Through the process of meiosis, or meiosis, depending on who you ask. So that is the process where we take uh, the number 46 and cut the number in half. So basically we turn a diploid cell into a haploid cell by separating those homologous chromosomes. So if I got one from mom and I got an identical one from dad, well, if I chop those guys in half, <coughs> hit the microphone. If you chop those guys in half and send one here and one there, then you're going to be totally, you're going to be totally fine. Um, then each of the cells will have the proper number of chromosomes. So the only reason that we do meiosis is to make eggs and sperm. That's it. Just eggs and sperm. Eggs and bakeys. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. Okay. The process is very similar to that of mitosis. The only thing that's different is it's set into two phases. So we have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, one, and then it goes to prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, two. So they, it's PMAT, PMAT, and then we get C at the very end. So you can probably hear you breathe in the microphone over there. <laughs> okay, stop that. So prophase, so all the different phases are going to have a one or a two after them depending on if it's prophase one or prophase two. So let's start with the one. So here's our cell right here and that's our cell that we want to turn into an egg or a sperm. 
And so how that's going to happen is that just like before, uh, my chromosomes are going to show up and my nucleus is going to disappear. But the main difference in this particular case is that everybody's going to go find their buddy. So they're going to go find their pair. So since I have 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs, every chromosome is going to go find his, his buddy. He's going to go find his homologous chromosome. And when he finds them, they're going to stick together. So you can see these two guys are stuck together, those two are stuck together, and those two are stuck together. And when they stick together, they form a little thing called a tetrad. And so a tetrad is just two homologous chromosomes, and they're just sitting on top of each other. And this cool little nifty structure is called a tetrad. Tetrad means four, and there's four chromatids here, so that's where that name comes from. So this is formed when two homologous chromosomes sit right on top of each other. Now here's the weird part, and I need to clear some room here. So here's one chromosome, and here's the other one sitting right on top of it, right? Well, what ends up happening during this phase here, which this is what causes us all to look so different, because these two little legs right here, they're going to get tangled up with each other. And so this orange leg is going to detach and, gr and become one with the blue, and then the blue leg is going to detach and become one with the orange. So if I were to unseparate those, I'm going to have something that looks like this, and then I'm going to have something that looks like this. So now I've blended both mom and dad's DNA into one chromosome. So it's kind of like shuffling a deck of cards to make sure that everybody gets a different, gets a different uh, mix every single time. So crossing over, this little thing right here is what's responsible for you looking a little bit different than your brother or sister. Okay, so everybody found each other. The homologous chromosomes all found each other. And during that, homologous chromosomes are going to trade legs and crossing over occurs. So the next thing that happens is metaphase. Metaphase, just like before, metaphase is when they line up in the middle. The only difference is that they're going to line up two by two instead of single file. So here's my homologous pair. So they, they've untetrated themselves. They were stuck on top of each other, and now they're separate. So they've untetrated themselves, and so they're going to line up uh, two by two, kind of like in grade school when you had to line up boys and girls. Well, here's all your boys, here's all your girls. Mm -hmm. And so we've got the tetrads lining up two by two. Next thing that's going to happen is anaphase one. Anaphase, if you remember, means away. So the chromosomes are going to be pulled away from each other here. Now I'm not talking that they're going to split in half, but I'm talking the whole entire chromosome gets dragged to the other side. And then we end up with telophase. Tela means the end, and so they reach the ends of the cell, and then they um, unwind, and but just for a short period of time. So the nucleus is going to show back up, the DNA is going to unwind, and then we're going to split the cell in half. So when I'm done, I'm going to end up with two cells, but they're haploid. Because if you notice the chromosome number, if I count, I've got one, two, three. Is that one or two chromosomes? That's hard to tell. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, there's supposed to be four of them in there. That's weird. So there, I can't find them in there. I can't find the fourth one. So there's four chromosomes in here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then in here, one, two, and one, two. So they went from four chromosomes down to two. So I've cut the number in half, so they're technically haploid. Since they're haploid, now um, they're still stuck in chromosome form. Remember, I, so the chromosome is two duplicated strands of DNA. So what I need to do is I need to chop those guys in half. So now I'm going to go through the next phase, which is going to separate the chromosomes into their individual little pieces. And that's going to be all the twos. Now what's nice about all these is they are identical to mitosis, so you don't even have to learn anything new. Yay! So prophase 2, nucleus disappears, it's all gone. The metaphase 2, they're going to line up single file, just like before. Anaphase 3, they're going to be separated, so the chromosome is going to be pulled in half into individual chromatids, and they're going to go in opposite directions. And then we've got uh, telophase 2, where the chromos chromatids arrive at the poles. So if you can imagine one right here, chromatid, chromatids, at the opposite side of the cell. And then they're going to turn back into chromatin, which is that loose hairball-like form of DNA. Okay. Then we get our cytokinesis, which chops up and divvies up all the cytoplasm and organelles. And then what do you get at the end? You get one, two, three, four cells. They each have two chromatids. So I went from four chromosomes to two chromosomes to two chromatids. So, so this is my starting point. 
this is um, meiosis 1, and then this is meiosis 2, and this is what I end up with. So I can't stop here because each cell or each chromosome, it's okay, just leave it. Each chromosome still has this duplicated twin hanging about, and we can't have that. We've got to separate them in half. So that's why we need meiosis 2 in order to separate the chromosomes into their individual chromatids. Okay, so that's how we make eggs and sperm, but unfortunately it's not just that simple. Well, it is for sperm. <laughs> sperm, 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 sperm. <laughs> okay, sperm do the same exact thing. We start out with the cell, and he's going to undergo the first division to make two cells that are, let's see right here, right at the end there. we got our two cells that are haploid, and then they're going to go through another division to make four cells that are haploid down here. They sprout little tails, and there you go, you got sperm. The only problem with females, we when we split it up into two, they don't do it evenly. They don't share nice. And so this one hogs all the cytoplasm and organelles, and this little dinky thing goes, oh, I'm so sad, and he dies. And then this one needs to go through one more cell division. So here's the end of meiosis one. And he's going to go through another division, and then, uh-oh, we don't split them fairly, so all the cytoplasm goes to this one, and partly and he goes to that one, and he feels so bad, oh, he dies. And then what do we end up with? One big, fat, honking egg cell. Now, the reason why we need a big old fat, honking egg cell is because by the time the egg gets released into your fallopian tubes, travels down to the uterus, and waits for a, a lowly little sperm to fertilize it, and then get embedded in mom's uterus and start sucking off her blood supply, that takes about two weeks. Well, most cells would die. And so what happens is by getting big and fat and hogging all the food inside of here, they basically pack themselves a lunch for the two-week trip. And so if they don't get fertilized and start sucking nutrients off of mom, they die. But if not, then, well, by the time the food runs out, that's okay because they're pulling nutrients off of mom's uterus. Yay, mom. So we call this process of making eggs ooh, -oo genesis. And I swear to you, that's honestly how it's spelled. Ooh, ooh, <clears throat> which is a Greek word for egg, genesis. And then for sperm, not so exciting, spermato. Genesis. Genesis means to produce or create. So, ooh, ooh, genesis, making of eggs. Spermatogenesis, making a sperm. All right. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say about this? I forgot. All right. In your book, you have this lovely picture that compares mitosis and meiosis with each other to see the difference. Like at the end of mitosis, you have two cells that are both diploid. And at the end of here, you have four cells that are all haploid. And you can see he only splits one time. He splits one two times. So you can kind of use this picture in your book to compare the differences between mitosis and meiosis. All right, that is it. Say goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> and we'll talk to you later. Bye.